I'm going to be discussing attending to difference today, and I have to preface this with my perspective. Uh, I do come from a perspective of being the director of the Culture, Brain, and Development program here at Hampshire College, and also as a developmental cognitive neuroscientist. And what that re means in real people language, not like the mumbo jumbo language, is that I'm really curious about development and how children's develop and how their brains develop and allow them to do the things that they do. And they maybe work differently, possibly, than ours as adults. And that's the perspective I bring when I think about attending to difference. Because a lot of times we think maybe attending to difference is not a good thing. Maybe it's a bad thing. We don't want to know the differences be between people because we want to treat them all the same. But I'm going to try and convince you other ways tonight. So why attend to difference? Well, because first of all, it's the very first step in noticing something or someone that might be very important for how we're interacting in the world, for how we're functioning in the world. And I'll give you a couple of examples. The first is a street actually in my own parents' neighborhood. And it's one I drive down or have driven down many times. And I don't necessarily have to attend to anything in particular. I can pretty much drive this without even thinking. I might notice the man walking down the street, but I'm not going to notice much else. But I need to actually be paying attention, because if I don't, a few seconds later, it's a completely different scene. There are now differences, and really important differences, that I actually need to pay attention to, right? So not only is this gentleman about to get killed by the car and is <laughs> clearly very angry. Um, but also, I don't want to hit the car that's coming out from the driveway. And I also need to think about the fact that he's pulling out. He's not looking at the car coming in the other direction. He might very well have an accident that I now have to deal with. And if I'm really, really good, I might even notice that the guy in the car is actually the guy with the cane. And that's because my dad's really great at Photoshop. <laughs> It is actually really important that we attend to differences that we're seeing in this scene, right? But it's not just noticing change or noticing difference. We actually need to attend not to things, but also to people, to individuals. And we need to notice where are the differences between individuals and where are the differences between people. So another example is perhaps I'm going out to lunch. And in going out to lunch, I need to find my friends. I need to pay attention to who's in the scene. I'm probably not attending to the fact that there are buildings in this scene or anything like that. I'm probably paying attention to the individuals who are walking across the street. And in particular, I'm going to be attending to faces, right? Because I need to figure out who my friends are. And so I'm going to be attending to the facial features of those individuals. And if I wait for a little while, I'm waiting and waiting and waiting for my friends. I might be getting kind of frustrated. And I might notice, oh my goodness. <laughs> It's President Obama. <laughs> Who knew? But the point is, if I hadn't been paying attention and specifically looking for faces, I wouldn't have noticed that there was President Obama. Moreover, if I didn't know that that was President Obama, I might go running up to him and saying, look, you're 20 minutes late for lunch. Why aren't you here? And why are we not at lunch? Now, clearly, President Obama does not have any time for lunch with me. <laughs> so I have to know who he is in order to interact with him appropriately. That's an important difference that I need to attend to. And we actually all need to attend to those differences because we need to know who's our friend, who's our family, who's in our community, and who's not, who's someone other. And here's where it gets tricky. Because yes, we need to attend to who's in our environment, who we need to pay attention to, but sometimes there are differences between people that we are not necessarily happy about how we respond. We have stereotypes about individuals that affect our behavior that maybe we as a society have decided these are no longer important differences between people. And that's a problem. But there are other problems with how we use our selective attention. Because it turns out selective attention is actually two things. So I've already told you about picking out things in the environment. That's one part of selective, selectively attending to our environment. But the other is ignoring the differences in our environment that are not important, or that we as a society have decided are not important. So for example, I'm not paying attention to the fact that there's a building in the background if I'm looking for my friends. That's really critical. But as adults, our attention gets really, really good. So we can pick out things, and we can also filter out differences that we've decided are not important that maybe actually are important. So in this case, when I was being very surprised by President Obama, I might have gotten really too narrowly focused 
and selecting him and filtering out everything else in the environment, and I may not have noticed that there was another difference that occurred when he walked into the street, and that's that the lights changed. And so now if I ran out to go get a signature, I'm going to get us both killed, right? Not very smart. So there are a couple of problems with having really good selective attention in that it points out things that are important, but it also sometimes makes us ignore the things that may very well be important. There's another aspect to this that's a bit challenging, and that's that we might miss differences that may lead to solutions to problems. So this is actually a classic example in my own life. Uh, so I might go to the computer, I've learned how to use my Facebook one way, and so when I open my Facebook and I try to look to where I think I'm going to go send an email, I go to that location and it's no longer there. <laughs> it's because the night before they've decided to change the layout on me. And so I'm struggling and looking around going, where in the heck am I going to find the email? And usually what happens at that point is somebody walks up who's quite a bit younger than me and they say, well, duh, it's down on the right, it's called chat, go ahead and message. And at which point I feel like pretty much an idiot because I've missed this particular solution to a problem. But there's also a bit of hope in that younger person coming up and saying, well, here it is. And that's the solution to some of these problems is in the form of really cute babies. <laughs> um, I'm a developmental psychologist. You always have to have the cute baby. Um, so what I mean by that is that the beauty of children and the opportunity of children and infants is that their brains are still developing. They're very immature. We as a human race are very immature for a very long time. And this actually presents an opportunity for change. Because it turns out that this kind of selecting out important information and maybe filtering out unimportant information, that might actually be two different systems. Not only that, they're actually maturing over a fairly long period of time. So picking out bits of information in children is actually really quite good. But what they really suck at is filtering out the unwanted information in the environment. In particular, they pick up differences that we've long ago since forgotten. And so they actually see more of the world than we do sometimes. And this is really very useful because while we may have decided that a difference is no longer important, they may pick up on it. And if we're listening, listening closely enough, we might actually pick up on solutions to problems down the road. But they also present us with an opportunity for change. So I mentioned that sometimes we have stereotypes that affect our behaviors. They affect them very quickly and automatically, and we can effortfully change our behaviors. But we first have to recognize that we've had a response, and then we have to step back and say, okay, I want to change that response. This is extraordinarily hard to do for adults. There's lots of studies that show that while we can do that, it takes effortful control, and we have to do this very frequently and often to actually make a big, big difference in this automatic response. The beauty of kids is that they have not yet figured out the meaning of the differences that they're perceiving. And this is where we can really make a difference because we can make effortful changes on our own part. We can step back and say, okay, I have this stereotype, it maybe makes me react in a certain way, but when I do react this next time, I'm gonna recognize that reaction and change my behavior. And if I do that around children, not only will they see how I'm reacting differently, but they will incorporate that into how they respond so that their next response is automatic. So the change might not be in my generation, but it's going to be in their generation if we learn to change the meaning of those differences for them. So I want to leave you with the fact that I personally think that attending to difference is critically important. It allows us to function in our environment in really important ways and live our lives well. We need to see them. But it's not attending to difference that's the problem. It's the meaning that we make out of those differences that's really, truly important. Thank you.